Today we're going to be talking about another CS2 market update because as always over the past uh, couple days, couple weeks, whatever, since we started getting this very recent uh, CSGO trading drama, CSGO market drama with Valve seemingly deciding to um, kill peer-to-peer -peer trading or at least attempt to take this stuff down. Um, there's been all kinds of updates. There's been all kinds of speculation and rumors and drama and people being scared and fear and desperation and everything all over the market. So there really is brand new updates every single day. But also in this video, in addition to just kind of going over the latest of what's been happening and, and what to expect over the next couple weeks. I also wanted to look back and take a look at another uh, previous huge update and previous huge change that happened in the history of CSGO, how it affected the markets and, and another time period where people um, you know, were saying uh, that CSGO trading was dead and investing was dead and the markets were going to crash and all this different stuff uh, and kind of see how things were affected at that time and how we got through it at that point in time as well. And maybe we can learn some things from that that we can apply to now as well. So that's what we're going to be doing in this video today. Of course, I want to take a look first at where the market has been heading. We have the CSGO all items graph um, right here. This is on eSport Fire. They have an index of every single item in the game. They track uh, kind of where the market is overall. And you can see here that the markets, even though all of this drama and everything started at the beginning of April, you know, here's April 1st, April 2nd, right in this range. We had a slight little drop off, but not really. Uh, we've been pretty stable. And then since then, um, as people have seen over the past couple of days, that maybe, maybe stuff isn't as bad as they had thought, or maybe isn't as bad as it seemed. The markets have actually been going up over the past couple of days. Now, again, there are still people saying, hey, uh, of course, the markets are going up. We can't sell. And where can we sell? And where can we cash out? But just understand that there are actually marketplaces that are still working. And there are still places that if people really wanted to exit the markets and leave and cash out, that they absolutely could. Uh, in the West, you still have SkinBid and Buff Market that are now currently like working and pretty much fully operational. Um, you have all the bot trading websites, stuff like SkinPort and um, Skins Monkey, and uh, I don't know, there's a million other one of them uh, ones of them out there skin swap and stuff like that um, these websites are still working you still have buff 163 that is up and running you have the steam community market you have ways to get rid of items now i know there are some people still kind of believing and, and saying that hey um, people who did want to trade on bot sites um, which seems for some people to be the best option right now even though i don't agree with that i don't believe that i have not sent any of my items to bot trading websites um, you have the seven day trade hold so even if people on april 1st or april 2nd or whatever did want to uh uh, try to sell or cash out or whatever or panic sell they would have had to wait until like april 9th april 10th april 11th so there are still some people expecting to see some kind of market crash in the next couple of days or at least some kind of slight drop again if that was true if that was the case i still think we would be seeing more of a sell-off right now because there are people um, who uh, can be selling to cash traders and stuff like that as well there's so many different ways and you have so many different options which i think is a great sign overall for um, the current uh, cs2 market that you have so many different options that um, yes peer-to-peer -peer trading is the best and i hope peer-to-peer -peer trading survives and exists and lasts because um, it's so convenient. It's so nice. And I think it is going to be the easiest path forward for growth in the CS2 trading and investing community. But even if that stuff dies or changes or is altered or whatever, things would still be okay. And I think that's a large reason why we haven't seen as much of a crash. So on the actual peer-to-peer -peer trading um, side, let's kind of see what some of these sites and places have been saying lately. We have a big or bigger update, I guess, from GamerPay. They put out an update uh, in my last video as well. They said, uh, as you might already know, GamerPay has paused trading since last week as Valve decided to shut a range of technical solutions we and other peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces were using to validate trades. Um, we've been working day, night, and weekend to rebuild how trading works on GamerPay, and we are excited to finally be able to share how the marketplace will work going forward. Uh, the new solution involves fewer steps for the buyer and is still easy for for sellers, so we are looking. Uh, so we are looking a lot forward to going live. Uh, I don't know if that's perfect English, but whatever. Um, overall, we are continuing as a peer-to-peer -peer marketplace with our safe escrow middleman solution, which is covered by our money-back guarantee. So there's a lot of good things going on there. Again, there have been some other people who have uh, kind of theorized or kind of talked about how an escrow solution does seem to be the best option. Some kind of um, you know middlemaning or whatever. My cat about to knock over everything on my desk. Um, and there are some places that have started to implement this. I know CSGO Empire said they have some kind of uh, escrow system or whatever. There are a ton of people talking about this. This does seem um, like a reasonable strategy. I know one thing I talked about in my previous video was I don't know how sustainable or scalable this is going to be because it seems like it's going to be very resource intensive, very support intensive. Now, hey, I'm sure these websites are doing well. I'm sure they're, uh, I don't know if they're making a ton of profit, but I know they have a lot of revenue and stuff. They can spend some extra money on some extra support and everything like that. But again, at some point, is it going to be um, feasible? Is it going to be scalable? Is it going to be um, practical? I don't know. We're going to have to wait and see. 
That doesn't mean it's not or that it can't be, um, but that's kind of one of my concerns about all this. So that means you either get the item, uh, or but again, seeing a money back guarantee, that is really, really great. And that adds um, obviously a lot of um, peace of mind and stuff like that. One second, let me get this cat down on the ground before she knocks everything over. Um, that means you either get the item or your funds return as a buyer and as a seller, you either get paid or keep your item. We came into this world to solve the problem that 46% report having been scammed. And as gamers, we believe a peer-to-peer -peer model where you hold and play with your skins is the right one, which I do agree with as well, which is why I do hope that at the end of the day, um, either peer-to-peer -peer trading websites figure out how to make this thing work or Valve works with them to kind of get this thing fully operational and back online as well. Because I think the markets were in a very, very great place. Um, a week ago, really. Um, so as far as buying, uh, this is how GamerPay says it's going to go down. As a buyer, I pay for an item with my credit card or wallet balance. The money goes to escrow and GamerPay safely holds on to them. Once I paid, uh, the seller is notified directly via GamerPay. No more uh, need for sending a trade via Steam. Uh, when the seller sends me the item, I confirm the receipt via GamerPay and the seller gets his funds. If there are issues, wrong item or no item at all, you can raise the case with our team to resolve it. And again, that's one of my questions is how many cases are going to be getting resolved to the team? How many cases are they going to need to manually review and deal with? I don't know. Probably that's going to ultimately decide how successful or unsuccessful this is at the end of the day. Uh, GamerPay as a seller, GamerPay will notify me when someone has purchased my item. GamerPay is holding the money ready to be released when I send the item. As a seller, I go on Steam, find the item and send it to the buyer. Then I click uh, sent on GamerPay to notify the buyer that I transferred the item. When the buyer confirms the item, GamerPay releases the funds um, from escrow to my wallet. Uh, for sellers, if you are a current seller, please ensure your prices and items or listings are up to date, whatever, whatever, whatever. So this seems like the solution they're going with. And again, this does seem like what a lot of other people have theorized as seemingly the best solution for the time being who knows valve could continue to put out more updates that change this or fuck this over or whatever valve could put out new updates that make this easier i don't really know because obviously uh, we assume one of valve's main incentives was to combat gambling websites and stuff like that which maybe they've been able to do a little bit but obviously the main kind of culprit behind this whole thing csgo empire seems pretty unaffected by this uh for the most part and they still seem to be you know finding workarounds and everything so i don't know what we'll to wait and see but this is the latest update from gamer pay um we do have Zuckwiz here who's the game uh the co-founder of gamer pay who said gamer pay will soon uh, be open again where people who enjoy their skins can safely list them while still having them in their inventory no hijacking of sessions no bots no bullshit just a simple escrow solution whether we can make it work so it's economically feasible to gamer pay time will tell but i'm confident we can still help a lot of people looking forward to relaunching the platform into the next era of trading counter-strike skins and that's a big thing here he is also concerned about the potential profitability or feasibility or workability of this or whatever, which I think is fair. Um, and I'm glad he's being open, honest, and transparent about that. Um, he also says that, hey, we're just going to be in a new era of trading skins, which is very, very true. And if you look at the history of Counter-Strike, there have been multiple different eras. And every time the community and the markets and the people find a way to get through it. Uh, and I believe that will happen again. I just don't know how long it's going to take or how complicated or convoluted or whatever it's going to be. So what I did want to look back at the end of this video before we wrap things up, look back to the last time that something this crazy, this insane happened and really uh maybe la maybe the last one was more so crazy than this one i really think this one's maybe even being overblown a little bit um, but a lot of people are comparing this to the time that valve implemented the seven day trade hold in counter-strike on march 29th of 2018 this was a very very big um time in the market csgo items received in trade cannot be retraded for seven days now obviously to people new to the markets or people new to counter-strike or um just people who have even been playing for the last six years this has become so kind of commonplace you know i think we take this for granted we don't even really think about how crazy the seven day trade hold is or how crazy a world without the seven day trade hold would be. Obviously, there's people who've been around for so long that know what that was like, but understand that when the seven day trade hold came out, there was a lot of doom and gloom. There was a lot of panic. There's a lot of craziness going on, just like there is now. There were so many people saying that CS trading is dead, that the markets are going to die, that, um, you know, trading and investing and all this stuff, uh, item prices are going to uh, plummet. There's, I'm sure there's a ton of people who are selling out and saying that, um, you know, this is all so stupid. I can't believe I've been wasting my life doing this, blah, 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 whatever. But if we look back to prices of a couple of different items, I have some liquid, I have some just regular skins, some more liquid skins, um, a, a case, a knife, all kinds of different stuff. We can see here, this is the AK-47 Vulcan in minimal wear. Um, and again, this update happened on March 29th of 2018. So we can pull that up here and we can see that March 2018, the prices for this Vulcan were about $48 um, at the beginning of March. And the market already started to trend down, which is kind of interesting before um, this whole trade hold um, situation even happened. And 
and we can see here that when this update actually came out um yes the vulcan was down at like 38 dollars something like that and we see a for sure downward trend we see a nice little crash right when this update came out nothing too insane this isn't some like catastrophic crash down or anything like that um but it did start to trend down um again going from about 48 dollars down to 38 uh but then we hit some lower lows a couple months later down to about 34 dollars and you can see here by the time like september came around we were already back to those original prices we saw in march and then even exceeded those in that month so um this market downtrend or sideways trading or whatever only lasted about six months uh and when this update came out prices were already trending downward so how much of it was even thanks to um this update specifically and how much was it just used to um you know normal market fluctuations and normal market conditions that happen all the time in the cs markets um here's another item we have the op asimov um this thing uh you know going into march of 2018 was like i don't know 35 dollars and again uh it was already on a little bit of a downtrend we see march 12th march 15th march 20th prices are already getting lower this is before that update even happens um i don't think anyone you know had any uh inside knowledge or inside information or whatever that this thing was coming uh but yes when this update dropped the prices did drop all the way down to about 28 dollars again from about 36 down to 28 a little bit later, prices drop again, 24. This would be kind of the more uh, catastrophic crash that we saw, but um, this was like in June, not really even related to this update. Um, but again, prices rebounded very quickly by September. Um, prices were already back or exceeding where we saw. You know, by January, prices were for sure, the whole market was back above. So maybe six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 months um, of a little bit of issues, a little bit of headwind, a little bit of craziness, but this issue resolved itself very, very easily. And again, six years later, we don't even think about this anymore. This is just a normal part of the market. And this is something um, that is very, very easily to operate and work around and so many people have found so many solutions for it you could say hey maybe those items aren't as liquid let's look at something a little bit more liquid the ak-47 red line this is you know the peak of liquidity in the markets this thing was about 30 dollars um before in march 2018 uh let me just make sure you guys can even see this yeah it's about 30 dollars before in march of 2018 um we can see when this update does drop this drops down to about 24 dollars but again it rebounds very very quickly this um for the ak red line prices were back to 30 dollars in like april this was like a month later prices were back this rebounded very very quickly again this is I'm sure so many people talking about doom and gloom and panic and how they're selling out and how trading's dead, yada, yada, yada. We look at a, a case real quick, the CSGO weapon case. Um, again, same thing back here. We see uh, markets already all over the place. Again, weird. This is in February of 2018. We see a little bit of a drop. Prices rebound. Prices are always shifting all over the place. Uh, and then here we see on March 29th, there's really like no drop off at all. By April 2nd, the prices actually increase of the CS weapon case. Um, it kind of goes back down, but it was uh, just kind of flat overall. We see that this update really had no effect or no impact uh, on cases at all, at least not this case. Now again, case market and the markets entirely are so different in 2024 than 2018. So you can't even really draw parallels. I'm just showing you guys at least what happened at this time uh, in a similar situation. Again, here's a knife, the butterfly knife night, uh, March 29th we did see these prices uh going from like 144 down to 124 uh it took a little bit longer for these to rebound but again by august prices are already back in the 140 so again five six months there and just understand that people love to panic people love to overreact people love to have doom and gloom but if cs is a great game if players are playing it opening cases if the player base is increasing if the player base is happy that's always going to be the most important and best thing for the markets we just came off a really successful cs major the player base continues to trend up like every day every week every month right now we're looking in a good direction yes this is some craziness and yes it is scary and yes i don't know what's going to happen over the next couple of days weeks months whatever um, but it does seem like as long as the community is able to adapt and we do enter into a new era or whatever that uh prices are probably going to be pretty okay in the long run and maybe even in the short term as well it seems like very often times that these situations get quite overblown sometimes they can be scary for a couple of weeks a couple of months maybe even a couple of years uh, but I do think that CS2 trading is not dead. I don't think CS investing is dead. I think everything's going to be okay. Uh, and I just wanted to use this historical example to show you guys just that. But that's pretty much it for this video today, guys. Hopefully, catch the next one. Until then, peace.